Hey guys, <clears throat> this is Don Bertram reaching out to you guys, just thanking you all for uh, supporting the Clyde Barker podcast. I thought I would take just a little time and send a video in to kind of explain and talk a little bit about uh, my history with the uh, Bug Boys over here on my left, over my left shoulder. Um, as you know, I've been supporting Clyde Barker's art for now, well actually this is the 30th year, so it's been quite a while. but. Back in the day, um, I'd been buying from Best Cutler Gallery and sending notes with uh, various things through the gallery to Clive. And uh, one thing led to another and I got invited. He had called me once at the store and invited me to come out to the studio. And of course I was ex extremely ecstatic and uh, uh, was all excited about it, but I couldn't of course leave work and uh, I had obligations here. So he took a rain check and, uh, or I created a rain check and he accepted it. And we, uh, when I went to California, I tied it in with visiting the Wild and Wicked Art Show at La Luz. Now at that show, I, I had the option, of course, this first time I'd seen a bunch of Clyde Barker art in person. Um, I'd seen a little bit from Best Cutler, but it was mainly just in portfolios and all. It really wasn't on the wall. But anyhow, when I got there, I had a budget, of course, and uh, I had the option of, of buying one thing or buying a handful of things. Well, I decided to get a handful of things, and one of them was Billy and Bobby the Bug Boys, which is this piece right here. Uh, I had, uh, you know, talked to Clyde preview the day before at the studio about various pieces, and I did not get to see the show ahead of time because uh, it was already set up when I got there, and I didn't expect to. I didn't know what to expect. Um, but anyhow, when I went up there I, and uh, saw him again, saw him at the studio, then got to see him again at Lelou's, uh, he told me a little bit about the Bug Boys, and I asked him why, of all the pieces, that's actually here. And he, he said it, it on for sale at the show, and he said that this particular piece, um, he had, of course, you know, he had just gotten that big offer from Disney, and this particular piece here was too skimpy. Uh, they didn't want it. They wanted colored stuff, but they thought the uh, loincloths or whatever they're wearing um, was just pushing the limit a little bit too much. So the whole time I was thinking now, is this really gonna work with Disney or not? Well, one thing or another, I ended up with them because I really loved the piece and ended up buying that piece. Um, but that was his whole deal. They didn't want some of the pieces because they were black and white. They wanted all color pieces. And then of course they had their restrictions and all. And of course you, this is the deal, you know, when you go and uh, collaborate with a big studio and they fund you, you do have to make concessions and compromises. So uh, uh, Clive at the time was very politically correct about it. And I ended up with this piece. Well, I personally, knew that the Bug Boys did not deserve to be a so-called Disney reject at the time. Uh, and it made me extremely excited when one year later, they popped up in this Being Music CD that Clive Barker did. And I had made some flippant remark to him about him, to him about this thing going, who's gonna buy it? I mean, how can you make any money off of this? I mean, it's blah, 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 it was stupid, you know, about big mouth. Anyhow, he told me, he, he put me on my place and told me that, you know, not everybody does something for money. You know, it's not always about the money. I mean, <laughs> uh, the true artist speaking. But anyway, so it did show up in here. It's on the uh, inside of the front cover and um, called Billy and Bobby the Bug Boys, okay? And, uh, 
I um, got credit. I had forgotten. I had been given credit for them reproducing the piece since I had purchased it at Lulu. So I was really excited about that. Also, uh, I forget how much longer it was, but I kept thinking and thinking and thinking and uh, uh, the Bug Boys had not showed up in the Aberat and I still hope they do. I'm still hold, I'm holding out hopes that they will in four or five, but uh, anyhow, so uh, I was ballsy enough to send in, if I remember correctly, I did, uh, this whole story about how they could be worked in to the apparat. Now, you know Clive, I'm sure, was not the most ex so excited to see something like that come. Uh, he's his own imaginer and doesn't need anybody helping. Uh, I think my whole point was just to include him somewhere or the other, you know, but it was elaborate. I mean, I had them morphing into bugs and they were actually art thieves in the, on the apparat, in the apparat and uh, blah, blah, blah. It was crazy. But, uh, of course, nothing ever, ever responded to it. But um, still, I, I just couldn't stand it. I had to send that in. Um, anyway, uh, I had sent him a, a copy of my Wii, my Wii World copy and asked him if he wouldn't mind drawing something in it that referenced the Bug Boys. And you can imagine how excited I was when I got this back in the mail. Let's see, let me find the piece here. It's one of my favorites of all the inscriptions that are in the books. Isn't that just the coolest thing? So anyhow, I just thought I'd share that with you. That is my, uh, uh, it's, that's all. That's my long, drawn-out story about the Bug Boys painting, and I'll include a few images so you can see uh, the impasto on Barker's paintings in case you've never seen one up close, and maybe it'll show up in my camera uh, for you to see it. I, I'm not really sure how the picture's going to turn out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and keep supporting the pop podcast, and let's see where it goes from here. Thank you, guys.